what you are about to listen to is me, Pastor Michael Bowman, as I think out loud about and try to apply the scripture to anything and everything that comes to mind. This usually happens in my car. So jump in and let's talk. I want to make a defense for putting down roots. And I mean this for in a church, in your kind of own personal life in a community, and for families, for children as they grow up. I would argue that especially right now, uh, and this maybe this isn't true in every situation, of course it's not because it never is, uh, these sorts of things, but I think that there's tremendous benefit that you could have by putting down roots somewhere. For instance, if you grew up somewhere and your family all lives in one area, it is of tremendous benefit for you. Unless, you know, you're from a kind of family where you have to get away from your family. Um, and I don't just mean because they kind of annoy you. I mean if like it is uh, dangerous or problematic for you or dangerous for your soul to be near your family. Maybe you would leave. But for the average person, I think that there is tremendous benefit in putting down roots in one place, probably where your family has already settled, uh, probably in the church that you have been a part of for a long time. And uh, my reasoning for this is simply just thinking about nature and the idea of what it looks like when you when you really uh, put down roots. I mean, you think about any kind of plant that grows deep roots. It allows it to stay for a long, long time, right? A mighty oak tree can grow significant to significant size. It can propagate itself significantly because it's in one place. It simply puts down roots and those roots are gonna grow as they're able, uh, move toward water and uh, if you take a tree when it's been planted somewhere and you dig it up and you move it somewhere else, you might do okay. Um, sometimes that works okay. It'll probably take a little bit longer for it to get settled and established. And then if you take that tree again after a couple of years and you try to move it, chances are it's going to die, but maybe it wouldn't. Maybe you really know what you're doing so you can do it again. But if you keep doing that, eventually what happens is every time you try to move that tree, you are weakening it. And there is significant uh, push in our culture to have people leave. I'm, you know, I grew up in an area where uh, most people who grow up here, and I think this is true, maybe just generationally. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a generation thing. I don't know if it's a in certain parts of the world. Um, but there are many, many people that I know who grew up and said, "I got to get out of here. I got to leave." And they'll leave for you know a time. Some of them will make their way back. A good portion, I would say, make their way back eventually. But what if you just stayed the whole time where you grew up and you continue to maintain the connection that you have with family, you continue the connection and relationships that you have uh, with you know various businesses and, and churches and things like that. I think when you do that, it actually allows you to significantly increase what you're able to accomplish and do because you are maximizing the use of your energy. You're also maximizing your uh, agency. As you know more people, you have more connections, you're more closely tied to family. If you're in a church, think about how many, uh, especially of you who are young men, have complained about the church and how it's just not what it should be, it's just not like it ought to be, I wish it could change. Here's my ideas for how it could change. Well, nobody's going to trust you or believe you if you've not proven yourself in some way. Uh, to prove yourself, why don't you just devote yourself to the church? This is actually one of the rules that I've kind of made, at least in my own mind, as I think about the various people who come at various times you know, into a church, into a church like ours, and they have criticisms of it. Now, I think the church that I pastor uh, has, there are valid things that you could criticize about it. I think there are valid things you could criticize about me as a pastor. 
Um, I don't I don't think that there's anything above criticism in this world in that it couldn't improve, it couldn't grow, it couldn't do better. But when somebody walks in who has never given of themselves to the church, has not shown their love for the church, has not uh, come and shown that they are willing to put in the hard work to change things. When somebody comes in and has taken zero responsibility for the church and wants to criticize her, I will not listen. Every time. I mean, I might be polite and you know let somebody talk to me, but I will not listen to a single word they have to say because they have not proven to me that they are actually committed to the church. Okay, put down roots and then tell me what you want to do and show me that you are faithful in helping to carry those things out. That is what I would want to see. I think that, again, this is true uh, across the board. I think with kind of the industrialized uh, world and especially with the new urbanism and kind of, you know, growth in cities and things like that, you, you have various trends that will pull people in various directions. Right now, you know, maybe it's like, you know, tech stuff. So if you really want to get into uh, the, the tech, technology world, you have to move to Silicon Valley or Miami or wherever. And so maybe there are reasons that you have, like just for various reasons, you would, you would need to move somewhere. But I would encourage people to really think about ways that you could use the, the things that you're passionate about, the things that you believe you're called to, your vocation, and try to do those things where you are, if at all possible. Or if you are somewhere where you're like, wow, I'm really not connected, I don't have those deep roots, and I could not see myself putting down roots here, then I think you should do everything you can to leave as soon as possible and find that place, whether that be uh, you know, a place where you are closer to uh, family and connections. Maybe it's a church that you've been to in the past that you love. Uh, maybe it's, it's simply a town that you, know, you grew up around that you knew was a good place to raise a family. And I would encourage you to do that. Go put down roots, right? establish yourself, and put all of your time and energy into one place, one community, one church, one family. I think if you do that, and then think about uh, what it would look like if we raise up our children to do the same thing, to do just like us, to stay where we are, and to put down roots just like we have, and to put all of their time and effort and energy into this place particular land, a particular city, particular businesses that we own, particular churches. What that, I think, would do would increase what we are able to accomplish as families, as churches, by significant margins. Because it's not as though you're constantly uprooted and changed. And God is gracious, and that sometimes that has to happen, and sometimes that's, I mean, it's a really good thing, and God calls people to do that even. So this is not, you know, uh, if, if you have to do that, this is not me saying you can't ever do that or it's sinful to do that. It's not at all. I'm talking about just the wisdom of how to live uh, to the best or live in such a way that we uh, accomplish the most for uh, our families and for the kingdom of God. I think that putting down roots by, you know, finding one place where you stay for a long time. This is wisdom from the ages. This is the wisdom of, of years gone by. And with you know a very mobile society, it's easy to think that that doesn't really matter, but it really does. It really has significant uh, influence, I think, on uh, what we're able to do. Those who have established themselves uh, as you know families or churches for you know significant amounts of time in given places have opportunities that you just can't have otherwise. We, we do understand this in terms of like building generational wealth and uh, the like. So financially we sometimes think about this, but even that, you think about how much you could uh, do if say you bought a house and someday 
uh, you have children that move into that house. Okay, they don't have to now spend money on a house, right? They can, they can end up with a house without having to put as much time and effort as you probably had to. So that frees them up to be able to go and do something else. Now, uh, you know, think about it in terms of even just the, the connection that we have uh, relationally in our families. If you uh, don't have children that are around you when you get older, well, you probably will end up in a nursing home or something like that. But what if you could move into a home when you start getting to the point where you're unable to uh, fully care for yourself? Maybe you're still partially mobile, you're still able to do some things, but you just can't care for everything. Well, then maybe you could move in with some of your children or even grandchildren, and maybe you could help them in some way. You could, you could do whatever you are able to do uh, for their benefit. And if we manage these things right, uh, you know, we can all take part in these you know, various businesses, endeavors, in just that regular you know, kind of a domestic life. There, there's so many ways that that this could be a benefit because if you take all of your time and energy and your children took all of their time and energy and your grandchildren took all of their time and energy and you put it into one area, one business or businesses, right? One, one kind of, you know, empire, uh, one church, one city, you just think about what the potential is and it's huge it's massive and I know that takes a lot more it takes you know strong families it takes strong relationships um, it takes you know a, a real deep love for a place for a, a people for a church uh, but this is something I've thought about a lot lately and I, I would I would recommend that you at least think about what it looks like to put down roots Consider this maybe the start of an apologetic for staying and an apologetic for putting down those deep roots that will last. Hey guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has been, go ahead and rate it, review it, or share it with a friend, especially if you're in La Crosse, Wisconsin, or the surrounding areas. That helps me expand the audience and hopefully increase the impact of these ideas. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns on anything that I just talked about, you can reach me at Pastor Michael J. Bowman at gmail.com. You can find more content from me, as well as information about the church that I pastor at ccc-pca.org. With that, I hope you can enjoy the many blessings of God today. Until next time.